Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunga Benny and Greg King. Yes, sir. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast, members of the Off the Ball Network. And in today's episode, we are going to be discussing this year's NBA awards. But before we get started with today's episode, if you are new to our YouTube channel or listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, be sure to download and share every single episode of the Ball Fake Podcast and make sure to go over to our YouTube channel and like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, without further ado, let's talk about this year's NBA awards, because, you know, you know, this was a very historic year in a lot of ways right you know there was a lot of records that were broken individually and you know within a team standpoint right but you know i want to start off the episode discussing the rookie of the year race the future of the nba right and there was a number of candidates for the entire year that could have easily came away with this year's rookie of the year race award right and guys like evan mobley did a tremendous job you know being one of the anchors of you know that cleveland cavaliers defense and you know when you're looking at guys like Kay cunningham who didn't go in the into the most ideal situation in terms of winning right away Obviously, you know, Kate Cunningham, you know, he did a lot of things individually that certainly jump out off the stat sheet, right? And then we're looking at guys like Scotty Barnes who have been consistent for the entirety of the season. You know, he definitely deserves a tremendous amount of respect and uh, consideration for this year's Rookie of the Year race. And I'll even throw in guys like Josh Giddy who had some stretches where, you know, he dominated, um, put up a lot of triple doubles and things of that nature. But this year's Rookie of the Year winner for me, in my opinion, has to go to Scotty Barnes out of Toronto, right? And, you know, this was a very tough decision for me to make right you know i'm a big k cunningham fan but i feel like scotty barnes definitely ran away with this award for a number of reasons right you know this is a guy that was impactful on both ends of the basketball we know what k can do on the defensive end of the basketball as well same thing for guys like evan mobley you know he's probably one of the better if not the best arguably the best defender in this entire rookie class but i think scotty barnes you know with him being the only player in this rookie class to rank top four in every single statistical category aside from three-point field goal percentage and three-pointers made which he actually ranks 12th amongst you know the entire rookie class he definitely has to be this year's rookie of the year you know he was third in scoring third in assists per game second in rebounds per game third in steals per game fourth in blocks per game first in field goals made third in true shooting percentage first in effective field goal percentage and second in field goal percentage overall and just put, to put the icing on the cake this was a guy that was second in win shares and you know he had the third most double doubles out of any rookie in this year's rookie class and he did it all in a win effort while also playing numerous roles under Nick Nurse you know Nick Nurse did a great job in terms of you know just experimenting with Scotty Barnes because he has a very tremendous skill set right he was one of the few guys who was put in a role where he was going to be versatile on both sides of the basketball right offensively kind of utilize him as a Draymond Green sometimes allowing him to be somebody that can you know run an offense decisions on his own do a lot of dribble handoff facilitating and things of that nature you know Scotty Barnes was tremendous on the offensive end the entire year right and you know the efficiency definitely backs those claims up right and not to mention him being able to play multiple positions defensively they utilize him as a point of attack defender being able to you know guard one through five essentially and you know have a very high defensive matchup difficulty all that being said it would on top of him being able to translate those things into wins and allowing the Toronto Raptors who now that they're firmly a top five seed in the Eastern Conference heading into the playoffs with a chance of, you know, advancing against the Philadelphia 76ers in that first round matchup. I got to go with Scotty Barnes for this year's Rookie of the Year. Now, as far as this year's Six Man of the Year award, this is probably the easiest award for me to just hand out. Without a doubt, it's Tyler Hero, right? You know, this is a guy that leads all bench players in scoring averages per game at 20.8. And historically, Tyler Hero did a lot of things this season that I felt went under man, especially for a bench player in NBA history. He could have been the fifth player in NBA history to come off the bench and make an all-star team. And he was also the fifth player to average 20 points per game off the bench in the last 40 years. In the past 30 years, only him and Lou Williams had scoring averages of 20 points per game, at least off the bench in the last 30 years. And not to mention, he's already the all-time leading scorer off the bench in Miami Heat history. This is only his third season in the entire NBA. And you know, with with him accomplishing so much and just being so far ahead of the pack, also um, leading his team and 
fourth quarter points per game at 5.6, which I feel like is definitely a big deal because when you're playing with a guy like Jimmy Butler, who's deemed an all-star and Bam at a bio, that definitely says a lot about who Tyler Hero is as a player individually and why he should run away with this award as a sixth man of the year. So with all that stuff being said, you know, him averaging the fourth highest points per game off the bench for a season all time, Tyler Hero is easily this year's sixth man of the year award. Now on to our next award, let's talk about this year's most improved player of the year award. And there's a number of candidates that you can choose from, right? Guys like Jordan Poole, DeJounte Murray out of San Antonio, the Cleveland Cavaliers all-star and Darius Garland, and you know, guys like Miles Bridges out of Charlotte, right? But I feel like this year's award has to come to a guy coming out of Memphis. And no, I'm not talking about John Morant. I'm talking about Desmond Bain. Desmond Bain has arguably been the second best player on this Grizzlies team the entire year. And with them being a number two seed, that definitely lets you know that he might be well on his way to becoming a star player in this league. Now, I say that very lightly, obviously, but when you're looking at the most improved person in the entire NBA, I think Desmond Bain by far has been the most improved because when you look at the rest of the candidates for this award, guys like Darius Garland, DeJounte Murray, Jordan Poole, I feel like the things that they improved on, they already had within their offensive arsenal and defensive arsenal, right? Darius Garland already was a pretty adequate passer, but you know, he improved. He just kind of polished that aspect of his game, right? Same thing for Jordan Poole, really adequate shooter, really polished his game from that standpoint as well, right? And then uh, DeJounte Murray was always somebody who could you know do a lot of things for you on the offensive side of the basketball as a combination guard being a guy who can put the ball in the basket originally at 15 points per game and then upped it to 21 points per game but you know a guy like desmond bain heading into this season just comparing him from last year to this year he's added way more to his game than guys like darius garland dejounte murray and jordan Poole have in my opinion because last year Desmond Bain, he was more so looked upon as a role player, an intricate piece to, you know, this rebuilding team that was in the process of, you know, making the playoffs for the first time in quite some time, right? And I think, you know, when you're looking at Desmond Bain, he was more one dimensional offensively, you know, didn't have the ability to do too much off the dribble, wasn't that adequate as a passer in terms of running an offense, being a lead guard and things of that nature. And this year you were able to see him make those jumps. John Morant's absence, he played the role of the lead guard, being able to run the offense and, you know, kind of initiate things off offensively in a half court setting. He did, you know, his traditional role by spacing the floor, which is something that we all understand that he was going to polish his game at. And, you know, he doubled his scoring averages and defensively, he did a great job also being, you know, somebody that, you know, was just providing a lot more on that end of the basketball this year. Obviously, we understand he's one of the strongest young players in the entire NBA. And then just going back to, you know, what he added to his game offensively, just improving his overall ball handling and things of that nature. So when I'm looking at guys like Darius Garland, DeJounte Murray, Jordan Poole, other respected candidates, candidates in this year's most improved player of the year race. The reason why I have to go with Desmond Bain is because Desmond Bain, not only did he polish his game, but he added more things to his game than some of those other guys did in this year's race. Now let's talk about the coach of the year award because this one was fairly simple for me as well. Um, there's a number of candidates like we mentioned, Eric Spolstra, Taylor Jenkins has been phenomenal getting you know uh, the Memphis Grizzlies rebuild way ahead of their schedule. But it, it was fairly simple for me to go with Monty Williams as this year's coach of the year. And here's why, you know, he ended up setting the franchise record for wins at 64 for the Phoenix Suns. This was the first time Phoenix had a number one seed at the end of the season since 2005. And you know, this is a team that won 78% of their games. And in doing that, they were able to set an 18 game win streak, which is the sixth longest win streak in NBA history. Not to mention their away record is way better than every team's home record, which definitely says a lot because we understand how, you know, valuable home court advantage is in the NBA. Despite it being the regular season, it's still something that, you know, it is extremely hard to overcome in terms of, you know, being ha having a much better road record as opposed to a lot of teams home record so that's definitely something that we cannot scoff at them being fourth in offensive rating and third in defensive rating is definitely another thing that is extremely telling and when we look at some of these teams like the denver nuggets who have been dealing with guys out all season obviously you know the phoenix suns them being a little bit more deeper of a team we understand that you know some of those things might not hurt their team as much but in the event that you know guys like deandre ayton who's their defensive anchor didn't play as much chris paul who's their number one floor general and devin booker who is their number one scoring option with for them to be able to still keep their heads above water and win 78 percent of their games all in the midst of that i have to acquaint this year's coach of the year award to monty williams without a doubt now on to this year's most prestigious award the most valuable player 
of the year award now there's been a lot of controversy about this award especially on nba twitter you know there's a lot of Embiid fans a lot of Giannis and Tantacupo fans who have definitely been advocating for those guys but you know this year's mvp in my opinion has to go to nikola Jokic, and it's for a number of reasons right you know similar to guys like tyler hero that he's had a very historic season overall right and you could claim you can make the claims that nikola Jokic is not only the most valuable player in the nba you could probably argue that he might be a top two top three player in the entire NBA overall and from just from a statistical standpoint you know he clears everybody he leads in essentially every single statistical metric he became the first player in NBA history to have 2,000 points a thousand rebounds and 500 assists just in one single season he has more wins and a higher win percentage when he's in the lineup as opposed to guys like Giannis Antetokounmpo and Joel Embiid and you know he became the first player to be top 10 in points per game rebounds per game assists per game and field goal percentage in the last 50 50 years this is a guy that also became the first player in nba history to average 27 14 and 8 all 58 percent shooting from the field and he's in the midst of having the most efficient season of all time with a pr of 32.8 and not to mention he's doing this on a much lower usage amongst mvp candidates like luka Doncic, devin booker Giannis antetokounmpo jason tatum and joel Embiid, who all have much higher usages than nikola Jokic. and it, that is extremely surprising given the fact that Nikola Jokic for the entire year and for the better half of the last two seasons now has been playing without Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. So with all that stuff being said, it's quite clear that Nikola Jokic is this year's NBA MVP. Now moving on to our final award, we're going to talk about the Defensive Player of the Year award and there's been a number of guys who obviously are deserving for this award and i'm glad to start see some of these guards start to get some more consideration guys like marcus smart definitely changing the game from that perspective defensively and it's great to see these guys start to get you know a little bit of appreciation from that standpoint because we know this is an award that has been dominated by big men since it's you know been established in the nba right and it's going to continue to do that for this year because jaron jackson jr is my defensive player of the year award winner you know he's been phenomenal protecting the rim all year without a out you know he's had the highest block percentage in the entire nba at 7.5 percent which clears you know just anybody within candidacy and not to mention you know he also leads the nba in blocks per game at 2.3 he has a higher steal percentage than guys like Giannis and tatakupo who do a lot of defensive things on the perimeter and the same thing for michael bridges right he has a 3.5 defensive win share percentage on top of the fact that you know guys like Giannis and tatakupo Bam Adebayo and Robert Williams, who are all predicating themselves defensively as rim protectors within their respective teams, have given up way more points in the paint this year as opposed to the Memphis Grizzlies. And we understand that is solely because guys like Jaron Jackson Jr. have obviously been one of the better, if not the best rim protector in the entire NBA from that standpoint. And he's been doing it in much less minutes compared to the, these other candidates. You know, he's only averaging 27 minutes a game, barely even touching the 30 mark, right? And on top of that, you know, his switch ability in the pick and roll scenarios covering a lot of ground being able to switch and you know just do a lot of things on all facets being able to be an interchangeable guy defensively i have to run with jaron jackson jr as this year's defensive player of the year award winner but hey let me know what you guys think about this here in the comment section thank you guys so much for tuning into another episode with me here on the ball fake podcast if you're new to our youtube channel or listening on apple Podcasts or spotify make sure to give us a five star rating like comment and subscribe turn on post notifications and give us a nice review but besides that it's your boy nicely chugging you're listening to the ball fake podcast and we out praise god